Hi, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Jessica Crochet, and in today's video, I am going to show you how we shiplap or faux shiplap one of our hallways in our house. My husband and I have gotten pretty good at installing shiplap, as you can see by the wall behind me. So if that's something that interests you, please keep watching and enjoy this video. I can't wait for you to see the end result. Okay, so this here is the area that we are going to be working on. This is our entryway from the garage. And this is kind of our little catch-all or little mudroom, so to speak. So you'll see my husband's work bag, my computer, we've got our batteries that we charge, work bags, hats, mail over there. Um, so this is kind of our catch-all. And when we first moved in here, we went ahead and shiplapped this area. We thought we were just going to leave it like this, but we are noticing that um, when we put our bags down, you can definitely see marks on the walls and we've repainted them and they just keep getting um, marked up. So uh, we decided that we are just gonna go ahead and shiplap this whole entryway. So we're gonna do all the way around. This door right here goes into our laundry room and then we are going to actually stop right where this arch is on this wall. So that is our current project. So we're gonna show you how we do a faux shiplap wall. rundown of the materials that we got. So we got quarter inch plywood, which I'll show an image of where it is. Again, all of this is from Lowe's. Um, we got over here, this um, is edging and we're going to use that basically where the ship lap meets the uh, sheetrock. And then this long piece here is an outside corner piece for corners. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty simple. So these are our pieces of um, materials that we got and as you saw in the video we had Lowe strip down the pieces of wood to get them in the car and then Ryan is going to um, cut them down to the sizes that we need. Okay so the first thing that Ryan did was he ripped off all of the corner molding that we had in here and so we are now going to be putting shiplap next to those boards. Okay, so we put the end caps on and we have started doing our shiplap wall. Hello. Hi. This is our fourth shiplap wall that we have been doing in our house. So um, we have some tips. Always oh, start from the top to make sure that as you go down, they are nice and even. So a lot of times people will use a nickel for their spacing, um, but we like a little bit of a larger gap, so to speak. <laughs> um, so we've used a ruler that Ryan had um, to give that spacing. So a nickel is about a 16th of an inch, um, but the ruler that we use is about an eighth of an inch. So again, it gives that kind of a little bit of a uh, bigger gap, but I like that look. I like the, the contrast in the sizes. Um, this time, since it is a smaller 
area that we're working with, Ryan is just butting the pieces up to the shiplap that's already on there, so we don't have to worry about that. And it's looking good. Okay, progress report time. We finished this side of the wall. And we got about halfway down the wall with our initial cut. So Ryan is now cutting the rest of the wood for the bottom of the wall. Okay, so we have completed the insides of the little nook area. That's about all we're going to do today. We worked on this for about three hours. Um, Ryan and I don't have days off together anymore, so we are going to be working on this in the evenings after work. So uh, end of the day one complete, and we will work on the sides another day. Day two. Okay, day two is done. We just did a little bit. Like I said, we're working after we come home from work, so not full days uh, working on this project, but we just finished half of the side up into the light switch. We'll deal with that tomorrow. And then we went ahead and did the top panels here on this wall. So tomorrow we will just do this side. You can see we've got the lines drawn out for where the studs are. So we are nailing into the studs to make sure that everything stays. Can't wait to get all those smudges off the wall. Again, one of the reasons why we are shiplapping. So something to point out, um, obviously we have this door frame here that is pre-existing we're not changing the door frame as of yet uh, for, during this project so we'll do a strip here right along the top of the door frame and then we come in with these little smaller pieces here um, you can kind of see the line in between the the two pieces but once we fill in all the holes and the lines you won't even be able to tell um, but then the look when you're farther back it looks like it's just a continuous piece of shiplap that we then put the door frame over so a little optical illusion little trick there for you and it is looking great so again this is the end of day two and we will continue on down the wall tomorrow day three okay we are on day three of the project just checking in um, so we are working on this long wall here going all the way down and Ryan has cut the little pieces that are in the door frame so that when you're all the way back it looks like it is just a continuous board going all the way through the door frame and I have started filling in some of the holes usually I wait until the end but since each board has at least six holes in them and we have a lot of boards i figured i would start early to get a jump on it this is what we use here the spackling it goes on purple and then dries white and then we just sand it down so it's a nice smooth surface and ready for painting okay so we are working on our last wall and we just have to go around the switch that is on the wall and um, so as you can see on this side we do have the switches that we have to work around so first things first we cut the power right oh yeah so that's why it's a little dark in here um, safety first since we're dealing with wires Okay, so what we will be doing first is putting the piece of wood on the wall, and then Ryan is going to use his Dremel to cut around the opening for the switch box.
just like that, power is back on. Hooray! And now, it all looks cozy. So as you can see, where the shiplap meets the sheetrock, and that just gives it a nice finished look. Okay, so Ryan is now adding the edging along the top, and the whole ceiling is going to get this. Again, where the shiplap meets the sheetrock just to give it a more finished look. And he is doing a miter cut. How you can kind of see there um, is cut at an angle, which when the two pieces butt up, it makes a nice clean corner. Okay, so here is the end of our day. We added all of the borders around. We caulked all of the areas that needed the caulk and filled in 5,000 holes, it seemed like. So now is the fun part. We are going to paint. Ryan has a paint sprayer, so we are just going to mark off all of the areas that we don't want painted so he can get in there and we'll show you that process next the next morning okay so here are our tools we are going to be using the painter's tape to make sure we get what we don't want painted covered that's the paint that we are using ryan got a <laughs> little suit tbd on whether or not we'll get uh, an image of him in that <laughs> he says nope and then we went crazy, you guys. Usually we paint everything in ultra white and today is a wild day. We're going with summer gray. <laughs> I know it looks white, it is white, but it's not ultra white. Crazy day in the crochet household. Okay, next steps, painting. So Ryan has made this little painting cave so to speak. We have taped off all of the door frames and the floor all the way around. We're gonna do the baseboards the same color. So we didn't tape those off. And we're also gonna paint the ceiling the same color. But we've got everything taped off. Husband back there. You ready to suit up? <laughs> <laughs> suit up in your paint suit. Okay, coat number one is done. And we will definitely be doing a second coat, but as you can see from coat number one, looks pretty good. We're just gonna do a second coat to make sure it's extra white. And then, while that's drying, I have a little project of my own for the can light up there. Okay, so for the can light that is in the hallway, we actually bought a chandelier that we are going to put up. Um, so we had to purchase this can light converter to go from a can light to a chandelier, but it came with um, a white covering, which I want it to match the, um, hi Maddie, hi girl. I wanted it to match the chandelier that we bought, which is an oil rubbed bronze. So I actually have this spray paint here, which is an oil rubbed color. Um, I'm gonna prime it first with this primer that we just had in the garage. 
and then it will match nicely and stand out against the white ceiling. Okay, so please don't mind the mess behind it. This is kind of our work area, um, but this is the light that we got, a little globe pendant light. We got this from Lowe's. I will link it below, um, as well as all of the tools that we used. Um, so we're gonna hang this up where the can light was. Hi. <laughs> and Ryan's gonna put the converter in uh, that I spray painted earlier. Okay, and it is done. The light has been installed. I just love how this looks, especially against all the white. I think it is so beautiful. This definitely was a lot harder than we expected, and mostly just because we have found so many things wrong, like with all of our other projects. Um, we're finding things that the builder did not do correctly that we have to adjust or we have to fix ourselves, but it is so beautiful. The converter kit was not as easy as mentioned, um, but I think that the frustration definitely paid off. Let me turn on the light. Can you guys see that? We were worried because it was a pendant that it would not be enough light, but wow, it is beautiful. It lights up the space and it is the perfect addition. So we are all done in here. Cannot believe how beautiful it looks. This may be one of my favorite projects that we've done. I feel like I say this after every one of our projects, but this might be my favorite room. Our little entry hallway. So we've gone around and we've uh, cleaned up the sides, we've cleaned up some of the edges, we've sanded some of them, um, painted where we needed to, and now it is time to put everything back. Okay, so we are done. All finished. Yep. It took us a little bit since, like I had mentioned earlier, um, we do not have the same days off anymore. So we were working in little bits and pieces, but we are happy that it is done. This was a big project for us. Yes, it was. So we had done multiple shiplapped walls before, but since this was a full hallway and there were lots of corners and everything like that, it took us just a little bit longer. Um, yeah. But what do you think? I think it turned out great. I mean, it was definitely a challenge. Um, you know, it was really difficult, you know, matching the lines all the way around the room and yep. making sure that, you know, everything was level and consistent all the way around. It was definitely um, not something I'd done before and I'm really happy with the way that it turned out. Yeah, I love this hallway. It's totally bright in here and it just, it fits. <laughs> It works, um, it works perfectly. So um, anything that was hard or frustrating? Um, the light directly over my head. <laughs> it was the first time that I'd used a recessed light adapter kit. Um, I watched two or three videos from the manufacturer on how to install it and read the instructions and they make it look super, super simple, but <laughs> real world application, it, it's not that simple. Plus. It wasn't installed, the can light wasn't installed yeah. correctly in the first place. There, we found some issues with the, the recess light itself and you know, it really gave me a lot of fits and headaches, but it's in there. And it's beautiful. And it's as a great you can addition. see, it works. Yes, it's a great addition. I'm very happy that we decided <laughs> to do that. Um, anything else you would like to let our friends know? Uh, no. I totally nailed it. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> we had our first, uh, worksite accident. accident. Yeah. First, first accident on the job. Kind of nailed my shoe to my foot. Um, <laughs> totally freak accident. Just happened to drop a brad nailer right on top of my foot and trying to save it. And Shot an inch foot. and a half brad nail right into the middle of my foot. Yeah, but he's okay. But I'm fine. You yeah. Know, cleaned it out, made sure nothing was broken or going to fall off. Toes it hurt for a few days, but it's good now. Toes can still wiggle? Yep, still toes are still wiggling. Um, So I guess that's it, right? Yeah. Yeah, it turned out really great. You know, overall, what I had in my head and what we have are exactly the same thing for once. Yeah, so. it's beautiful. So that's it. <laughs> 
<laughs> yep. So um, on to the next project. On to the next project. Which is actually directly behind me. Laundry room. That's our next project. So if you liked this video and you want to see what we do with the laundry room, um, please be sure to subscribe. Let's be friends and click the bell so that way you are notified when my new videos come out. Um, of course, as always, please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. I hope you liked it. I know it's a little different than what I have been posting, but I am hoping that we will have many more of these videos in the future. It's a lot of house. <laughs> a lot of house, a lot of uh, projects on the list that I just keep adding to. Yeah. I've never so, done so much work on a brand new house. But it's beautiful and we love it. So um, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Bye.